Today I'm going to show you how to build this sick fireplace and avoid the mistakes I made. To start this project off, I first found the center of the wall, then measured out to find where the finished edge of my fireplace surround would be. After finding this location, I marked and cut it with an oscillating saw. After I cut the trim, I used a razor blade to cut the caulking located at the top of the trim, then remove the trim. I then used a stud finder to find the studs in the wall. I will be attaching six 2x4s uh, cut to various lengths to these studs. And these 2x4s are going to act as my mounting surface for the fireplace frame. Now, let's build it. Here's a closer look at the finished frame. I used about 14 2x4s. It was a few more than I originally uh, was planning on using, but due to the fact that I'm using a quarter inch plywood, I did not want the plywood to warp, so I just put an extra few 2x4s in there. Um, so some things that I did was put these 2x4s in. This is actually what the fireplace will screw to. I had to end up notching that 2x4 due to the outlet just being in the way that will vary depending on where your outlet's located in your wall um, I had to put in I had to put in these blocks this is actually going to catch my my piece of quarter inch plywood that comes over and my my trim that runs down the side of the wall if we take a closer look you can see here I just used the Craig jig to do some pocket holes and then some other areas I just drove drove screws down through the top of the 2x4s. I used 3.5 inch deck screws to secure these 2x4s to the studs. Um, as you can see this thing is very stout. It's not going anywhere. I had to cut all these 2x4s at different length due to the ceiling having some slope in it. And this was just an easy way. It was kind of difficult to stand up a wall when your ceiling's finished and you don't want to damage anything. It takes a little bit more time but you get a better result. And as you can see in the video, I'm using the laser a lot. Um, that's not necessary. It's just something I have and it's, it makes the job a little easier. If you look here, I drilled some holes in the side 2x4. Uh, There's a lot of warnings about making sure that the fireplace could vent properly. So that's what those holes are for. Just to add a little extra ventilation. So now that I'm done with the framework, I'm going to move on to sheeting. And then get the fireplace and the TV mounted and then Look at getting this thing finished up.
here's the fireplace fully sheeted this is just quarter inch sanded ply used a 18 gauge brad nailer to secure it uh, went ahead and cut my hole and now I'm going to move on to the next step of trimming out the fireplace and putting on all the battens So now that the fireplace is sheeted and the trim is put on, it's time to install the battens. Now when it comes to installing the battens, the most important thing is to make sure that the battens are even across the front of your fireplace. Now you could use math to do this, but if you suck at math, the other option is to use an online calculator. So I'll show you the online calculator that I used. So here's a wainscoting layout calculator. Uh, this is a free calculator I found online. I'll put a link in the description. So pretty much just come down here with the wall. So the first thing you want to do is change this to inches. And the width of our wall is 84 and a quarter. So it's going to be 84.25. Then the style width. So the batten or the style width is going to be one and a half inches. So 1.25. And then the number of panels so we have seven panels calculate and then you come down here and it will actually draw up a layout for you and it will show you where you need to measure from and where you need to place your marks at and it will give you each individual measurement so that your your battens or your styles will be even across the face of your fireplace and this is helpful because if you're wanting the edge of your fireplace to land on one of these battens or styles you can use this calculator to put in different numbers of battens and then that will change the distance and you might be able to depending on the size of your fireplace get the get the battens to line up with the edge of your fireplace okay so now we're to build the mantle this will be pretty simple all I did was take a one by six and cut it down to five feet. Book cut the ends to match and I will glue this together and then I have these two pieces I cut down to four and a quarter that are gonna fit as top and bottom and that will be our simple mantle. Also, we wanna make sure we wanna nail from the side and not from the front, that way when you look at it, there's no nail holes. Finger. You're going to want to make sure you clean all the glue up, especially if you're going to stain this. The glue will change the color of the stain. Alright, now let's work on the other side. And as you can see there, with those 45s, it does a pretty good job of does a pretty good job of getting a nice seamless corner. Um, if these nails bother you, you can always fill them. But with this, it's not gonna, they're not really gonna show and they're not gonna be visible. So I'm probably not gonna fill them. But now we put the top and bottom on the shelf. So I'm going to put my nicer board over the top, which is going to be this first one. So I can just lay the face down. It should. I might have to free. Oh, there it goes. Fit right in here. So if you don't want to nail through the front, I got I have some nails here that are one inch, so they don't have the ability to go through completely. So what I'll do is I can even up this coming at an angle. Shoot that in there and that will hold it till the glue dries. 
And so there you can see you got a few clamps on here and now I'm just going to let it dry. And then once the glue dries, I'll flip it around and glue the other side. So now that our mantle has had some time to dry, this, the glue is dried on the other side. Now I'm going to install the bottom. So I had to cut out right here to allow room for the mantle. Um, pretty much just a half thought. I should have run these after the fact. But I just cut those out. Now I'm going to put my line through here so I could put my braces in. Here I'm just drilling a hole with a hole saw through the panel. This is going to give me a way to get the power cord from the TV down to the outlet. After drilling that hole, I installed the mantle to the bracket. After finalizing the placement of the mantle, I countersunk two holes through the top of the mantle and down into the bracket. This is going to provide me a place to insert two screws. This is going to lock the mantle to the front of the fireplace. This is also a good time to outline your mantle. So as you're installing the rest of the battens, you have a line to cut to. After cutting and sanding all the battens, I used wood glue and finish nails to attach them to the front of the fireplace surround. Now that all the woodwork is done, it's time to prep for paint. I started this process off by using a high quality painter's tape. I taped around the entire surround and this did a good job at keeping the paint from bleeding onto the floor and onto the sidewalls. So the paint that I'm using here is from Bear. It is limousine black. It's in a matte finish. So after some thought on how I was going to apply the paint to the fireplace surround, I settled on using just a three inch roller. I've used this in the past and had good luck with it. It only took two coats to completely cover the entire surface with no bleed through. After the mantle was installed, I went ahead and installed my TV and then moved onto the fireplace. The fireplace was very easy to install. It only takes two screws. They screw through the back of the fireplace and into the studs. 
After you have the fireplace installed, they give you these little plastic crystals and you fill up the plastic tray that's in the bottom of the fireplace. If you are interested in the measurements for this particular fireplace, I put the measurements for the mantle and for the fireplace in the description. If you want to know more about the fireplace insert I used, I will leave a link in the description of the video detailing its functionality 